What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here. And today I'm joined with the Mars Recruit to have our first ever Galaxy report for the channel. And in this video, we're going to kind of talk about some of the biggest kind of news topics of the week. And one of the biggest things that happened was the official report of the Game Awards nominations for Game of the Year. And when I look at the list, they have some very kind of impressive games because 2023 was kind of packed with a lot of different games this year. Um, so I'm, we're going to kind of give kind of our impressions about the list itself, but also kind of give our, our thoughts on some snubs that were kind of left out, as well as what games we would have put on the list. And then later in the video, we're going to be talking about the new announcement of the Legend of Zelda movie, live action movie that is in production. We're going to be talking a lot about that. So let's start off with the game of the year contentions. And so the official list that was dropped earlier today from the Game Awards has Alan Week 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Spider-Man 2, Resident Evil 4 Remake, Spider uh, sorry, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, and Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. So those are the official six games when I look. And uh, let's say let's start off with the with our snubs. With, with games that we felt like were kind of left off this list that could have possibly been on here. And I mean, I have a few games off the rip that I, I could say. I think my two biggest ones, me personally, um, I think number one for me would be Hi-Fi Rush. I felt like early the start of the year, right in January, I loved this game. This was kind of remembrance of like the classic games where it was just fun. The story is solid. It's funny. The, the, the commentary was great. The writing was great. It was unique. It was a rhythm based action adventure game platformer. And I was just like, this is so different, but it just was so cool because it had that comic book Kind of art style which i thought was so unique for the time and, and it was out of nowhere it was it was right off the rip no no sponsorships no ads nothing it was just oh yeah it's, it's releasing today go play it and i was like this is a great game i enjoyed this and it's hitting that metacritic 89 with a open critic and 89 so it's like it's hitting that high level like close to a 90 which is very difficult to get on metacritic so you know it's hitting that high tiered um, the other thing I would say is like, I know that right now the biggest two games that are probably the most has the most uh, criticisms or the most uh, contention of the year was Final Fantasy 16 and Starfield with the other. So those are the other games I thought that hell I thought it would be the I guess you would say that was the console fanboy pick either way. So it was kind of like that. Yes, I feel like one of those games being not on the list has definitely hurt a lot of people. Um, but those are kind of the games I looked at right away as ones that I was surprised that were not on this list. But uh, Angelica, what was a game, or if you have multiple, that you felt like was a major snub here? Um, I think five of the six were, really all six doesn't make me upset, um, but I do think five of the six was pretty nailed um, based on the critic scores and in my opinion. The one that I don't agree with, and this is an overall opinion and not so much about the game, is that remakes. And I don't think remakes should be considered for game of the year. Um, we've now seen this last couple years, a lot of remakes coming out and it's, you know, we've seen Resident Evil 2 remake uh, get a game of the year uh, nominee. We have now seen Final Fantasy 7, but you know, for that one, you know, there was major changes, but the overall picture is remakes. I don't think get should get a game of the year nomination, especially in a year like this, where it has been a loaded year for video games, just because, again, you're taking a famous concept and a famous story and you're rebuilding on it in a more modern time. And um, not to say Resident Evil 4 didn't do a tremendous job. They did a very good job for the remake, but it's a remake. And I do think the game of the year, with as we get more and more remakes each year, um, needs to create an, its own category and pull these out. It should not be uh, part of the game of the year uh, remakes overall. Now, the game that could be there's a couple for me that I feel like you can make an argument for. Uh, we know about Starfield with its size and scope of the game, but it had some mixed results from critics. So um, I understand that. Same thing with Final Fantasy 16. Had a lot of impressive fighting uh, schemes. The story was all right um, to solid, but you know there was some performance issues as well for Final Fantasy 16. So you know one thing that I will say is no Diablo, which was very surprising to me. Um, it sold very well. I know their season one was a disaster, but the initial game had pretty high praise. And the final one is Hogwarts uh, Legacy. One of the highest sold games of this year is going to be Hogwarts, probably behind Call of Duty when it's all said and done. And that's not even, it got zero nominations. 
this year. So it's pretty wild. I know it's not a high end critic scores, but to be the most sold game, and I think it got it's in the same range as games like Starfield and like Final Fantasy. It's in a similar type of range, and to not get any nominations is pretty surprising. So those are a couple ones uh, that that shocked me. And I know I'll say this before because I don't want to go too long. An indie game. I'm shocked an indie game did not drop into the, the top six. Sea of Stars, I thought was going to make it in there. Personally, I would have Dave the Diver, and I know people think I'm going to be crazy. I think Dave the Diver, not well known enough. Um, but Mars made a good point about High Fire Rush. That's another one that could have made it in there. But Dave the Diver, Sea of Stars, or High Fire Rush uh, could also be a strong candidate. Yeah, and Hockey, what, what were some games you felt were snubbed here in this Game of the Year contention? Yeah, so I think you guys both made some good points. Um, I'm going to stick with, uh, you know, Angelica was saying that remake, that Resident Evil remake, I don't believe, you know, should be nominated. Uh, I think it should have went to either Hogwarts or another game, but my game that I'm going to pick is Armor Core. Um, I think it was a very unique game. It came out with a lot of good content. It didn't come out with bugs, right? Which is now we have to say that, which is a, is a big deal now. Um, so I think Armor Core um, should have maybe gotten nominated. It could have scared people away because it was that Souls-like game. Um, so, you know, could have scared a few people away, but uh, I think it should have gotten nominated. That and Hogwarts definitely should have gotten nominated. Yeah, and so if I'm going to give my brief list of games that I would put in this this Game of the Year contention, I'd, I probably would stick with Alan Wake 2 because of, uh, you know, it's considered one of the best horror games in, like, the last decade. Um, Baldur's Gate 3 is considered to be one of the best RPG games we've seen in the past decade. Uh, Spider-Man 2, I think, is a smart pick. It's really action-packed. There are a lot of bugs in the game that, that people kind of showed off uh, kind of the issues, um, but it's still very solid. I think the story was all right. It, the combat still very good. Um, I would not put Resident Evil 4 Remake. I think remakes are it's, it's just it's just lazy. I mean, granted, I think it's great that you have remakes of classic games come back, but at the same time, I feel like if I wanted to make the ultimate game of the year list, I would just remake Halo 2, Metal Gear Solid, God of War, Ocarina of Time, uh, Mario Galaxy, and then just say this is the highest rated game year I've ever seen possible because you could just remake every classic game out there and you'll be set, right? I feel like that's just, it's just lazy in my opinion to just put a remake up there. I would put Master of Mar Samira Bros. Wonder. Um, I, I keep Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. My list would probably be adding in Hi-Fi Rush. Uh, and I don't know. I feel like it's hard. That last pick for me is probably the hardest one. Um, I think I probably would go with Starfield mainly because of the scope of the size of the game. And plus, it was on the top 10 selling games of the year based on numbers at this point. And it's it's not a multi-plat. So I feel like it's it's doing very well for a game that's it's mainly well, exclusive. It's on PC. On... It's on PC. Okay. It's All right. On... But at the same time, I can make the case that it's on Game Pass and it's still making you know, crap, one of the top 10 selling games of the year, right? At the same time, yeah. right? But it's the uh, lowest rated one. So that's why I'm not, I'm not like, it's the lowest I, rated game of the group. I'm, I, I, I get that. And my point is because of what it was able to accomplish. Like I could say like, you know, Animal Crossing was one of the highest selling games that became game of your contender. Did I have ever any thought that it was going to win? No, but they, they acknowledged the fact that this was one of the highest games sold of the year. And it came in the time of COVID when everyone played it. So it was kind of the same thing as much as Starfield got a lot of criticisms for it, like the, you know, there's a lot of things you could say that are some issues. At the same time it was one of the most played games because people either wanted to play it to crap on it or play on it because they wanted to play it. So it was kind of like that mixed bag on that. You know what I mean? Like as much as I think that Final Fantasy 16 deserves to be a contender, I just feel like at the same time, it just did not get played as much as even in 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 square enix's standards it wasn't as high as even final fantasy 15 which i thought still 16 had a great job but like even to their own standards it didn't hit the same levels that they expected well, and not, well okay gonna, i gotta add a little context though final fantasy 16 was a ps5 exclusive no pc right 15 was on the old gen consoles and xbox playstation and pc so there has to be a little, you know, there, there is a okay. little difference. That, that's and that's that. fine. That's fine. And at the same time, it's the same thing that you can say with Starfield, right? Starfield back in Fallout 4 days, it was multiplat. So it's like, it's the same, it's the same thing. You can make arguments all day long with when it comes to a lot of these games. 
I felt like it's the reason for me is that I would put Starfield over Final Fantasy 16. I think they're very much similar in a lot of that concepts and a lot of what they're able to accomplish with their games. I, in the, at the end of the day, Starfield ended up s selling very well, right? And even though they were on a Game Pass game where most people played on Game Pass, right? That's kind of the idea was that even that being the case, people bought a crap ton of them, right? And, and that's, that was my argument. Like if you're going to give Starfield the, the nod, I put it over Wonder mainly because it's, I think, grander in scope. I think Wonder is very is a very good game, but it's very isolated in what you're trying to accomplish with it. Right. And I feel like it's yes, it's solid of a Mario game, but at the same time, they they only they only really added one kind of component. Like it's not if you made it more of a 3D Mario game, I would probably put that over Starfield easily. Right. But the, it's it's in the 2D Mario game is limited on what you're able to accomplish with it. Um, and I feel like it, it could have done more, but I think it's still a good game. I would just put Starfield in that in that sixth spot, not even the fifth spot. I put it in sixth. To be honest with you, but because it did get nominations for best RPG of the year, um, but I, I it's not going to win it. Like, it's I mean, I'm not going to be upset if Starfield was in it. I just it's a lower rating than Diablo, Armored Core, Final Fantasy 16. Um, so it's hard to say, you know, it should jump over those games, even see a stars, even Pikmin. Right. So it's hard to see that it can jump. And then we didn't even mention Street Fighter. Who is actually in the 90s which mm -hmm. hasn't even been considered um street fighter 6 in this one and I, that is a little more niche so oh, i understand that um but like it's hard to make that argument and then you say okay well it's one of the most played which i do understand but then hogwart legacy is sold more than starfield it's actually the most sold game in the world so far you know and and that got zero nomination so it's i, I can understand people making a case it's just hard for me to see you know starfield should get the nod over some of these other games that have a higher rating um, or Hogwarts Legacy that sold more, right? So that's kind of the tough spot when it comes to the Starfield stuff. Not to say that it's not, I think in a lesser year, I, do, I think Starfield does get a top six nomination, right? But because 2023 is as loaded as it is, I just don't know if, I don't know a strong enough case to put it in the top six. Yeah, that's fine. Um, but what's your sixth uh, for this uh, yeah. year? Yeah, um, so I agree with, Actually, the five of the six, and the one I take out, I put in Sea of Stars. And even though I said David the Diver, I think is a more deserving game, Sea of Stars is a more famous one. And um, to me, it was between Sea of Stars and Hi-Fi Rush. Um, and I'd go with the Sea of Stars because um, I thought indie games every year has gotten at least one nod, I think for the last three or four years. And Sea of Stars has sold over a million copies. Unfortunately for Hi-Fi Rush, a majority did play it on Game Pass, and I think Starfield had a much larger audience on PC, so not enough people, I think, played it that it was deserving of. I think more people played Sea of Stars, uh, or brought Sea of Stars, um, and it, it got a, a lot of high recognition as well. Both of them, I think, 89 on Metacritic, so both had a very similar high elite score, just below that 90, um, and I'm gonna go with Sea of Stars with the other five as Alan Wake, Spider-Man, uh, Mario Bros. Wonder, Baldur's Gate, and Legend of Zelda. And Aki, what would be your six for this list? Yeah, I'm going to keep mine short. Um, I'm taking out the Mario game. I'm not a big 2D guy, never really have been. Um, so I'm going to take that one out, and I'm also going to take out the remake, kind of like Angela Kill said, it just doesn't deserve it. Uh, it's not a new idea. So I'm throwing in Armor Core because I like that game. It was unique. I kind of fell in love with Elden Ring, and it was just like Elden Ring with robots. So um, very unique game. Very fun game. Boss battles were crazy. And then I'm going to go probably with Hogwarts Legacy. Um, for a game that I didn't think was going to be like really good, I played a few hours over at my friend's house, and it was a very interesting game. Um, and I watched streamers play it too, and there's some really, really funny guys playing that game still. So um, I'm going to uh, throw those two in there. Yeah, I mean, so overall, if you guys agree with our list or not, put your list in the comments below. We'd like to see what you guys think. If you agree with the list or not well let's go to the last segment which is going to focus on the new announcement of the fact that legend of zelda is getting a live action movie uh, i think it's in already in pre-production phase they haven't picked any of the actors or actresses that are going to be in the movie yet uh we don't even know a plot we don't know any of this stuff this is still early um i think the year what they're saying what 2025 they're thinking the year is going to be by the time it's ready to roll so I, I want to see what you guys think of what you want to see from the movie that's live action legend of zelda i mean let's be real 
there's one thing to be animated, but there's another thing to be live action. And Nintendo has been very cautious of making any of their IPs into movies. And we've seen the last time they made a live action Nintendo movie technically was Detective Pikachu, which was very good. But before that, it was, I mean, Sega, I guess is, I, I mean, they made Sonic like, but like that, but that's not technically a Nintendo IP. It's the last real Nintendo IP that was live action was I think Super Mario, the Super Mario Bros movie, which was horrendous, right? It was one of the worst movies ever um, rated on like <laughs> on all the movie rating channels um, out there. And Nintendo is very cautious. They realize that Mario movie made it was a killing one of the highest on point grossing point. movies ever when it comes to animations. Like it was one of the highest grossing ever competing with Frozen, right? That, that Goliath, right? And when you see that, you're going to say, all right, let's think maybe it's time for us to start dishing some movies out with our IPs because, you know, they look at what Sony's doing with The Last of Us. It's doing well. Sony's already jumping on the boat. We got to make a bunch more movies that are, are TV shows that are live action now. Um, I'm surprised that you know, Microsoft even still wants to do live action movies after what they saw with Halo show. Um, oh, my God. But, we got Fallout. Yeah, Fallout, Fallout and Gears of War on the Gears, way. Yeah. Uh, you know, all these others that are on the way and I think Nintendo, what I'm looking for with this movie is I made so many videos at this point about live adaptations. Yeah. And the biggest thing, you can go check this out on our channel. I've made two videos of this adaptation analysis breakdowns. But the biggest thing I'm looking for for this would be to pick either an original story like Ocarina of Time and make a movie out of it if you if it's possible. I know it's a little long to be able to make like a just a standard, like maybe an hour and a half movie like Mario movie was very short hour and a half you were able to tell a standard story that wasn't necessarily from the games but it was close enough that we could call it that but legend of zelda is never a short game it's never a short story it's pretty long a lot of dungeons to go through so you're gonna have to pick either ocarina of time or something along those lines and or even link to the past in some yeah, way like was, link yeah. to the past might be the easiest one to do yeah. um and and maybe just be brief at the dungeons. You might have to have to have some fast, fast cut cut through scenes where it's like the only real dungeons you see are the first dungeon, midway dungeon, and last dungeon. But every single dungeon in between is like a, a skip through, and you're gonna have to have a solid actor playing Link. I mean, somebody that that I'm sorry, but I, even to this day, Chris Pratt was a ballsy move, and. The reason why you're able to pull off wasn't because Chris Pat's uh, voice acting was amazing. It was because the art act acting and the charm of the movie was so good that it made it just made it work. Like I, even even then, I still can't get over Chris Pratt had little to zero Italian accent when saying his voice lines. Um, but you got to have a solid link and pick a story that's similar to the link stories and just and just be consistent. Don't don't do something outrageous and just like make link a chick or something and just like let's just let's just make let's just be as <laughs> as politically correct and just make everyone make everyone get yeah, pissed right. off like let's <laughs> let's just not um just let's please not do that so uh hockey what would you want to see in a legend of zelda i know that you're more you just started playing a lot more of like the recent legend yeah. of zelda games so you're kind of a newer guy to this this legend of zelda story scene so what's a, a take from somebody from the outside um, what would you want to see from uh, live action? Yeah, so mine's pretty much going to be generalized. I got really two questions, um, and you kind of hit on it a little bit. Um, but the first question is, which story are they going to tell, right? Are they going to tell, I was thinking, are they going to tell maybe a more recent successful story, like start with the Breath of the Wild, or would they kind of get inspiration from a bunch of their, uh, you know, successful titles and kind of mash it together and make their own story? Um, and if they do that, that's fine, but they need to follow like The Last of Us. Like they need to have the core of Zelda in the movie and then they can work around it and make it work kind of how you were talking about um you know that's the only way it's going to work for the big screen is if they were to do that um they cannot go the route of halo because halo was just an absolute disaster um you know it, it was anyone that watched the halo tv show that was a halo fan will tell you and won't even claim uh that tv show for themselves you know um what i'm gonna say is i swear to god if ganon and zelda 
hook up at the end of this movie, I'm going to freak out. All right. That better not happen. <laughs> stick to the story. Give me a good, you know, give me a good Zelda story. Um, you know, just make the fans happy. If you need to pander to the fans, kind of like The Last of Us did, and then make up a story, make a good story. Um, and, and I think they I think they have, you know, a golden nugget. And if they're able to just give the fans what they want, then I think they're going to be successful. And uh, Legella Kill, you are a fan like me that's played since the beginning of time, like we are from the Ocarina of Time. What would you want to see from this live action movie? Yeah, guys, this is one of the most nervous I am about a production because it's one thing to do animated. It's another thing to do live action link. Um, and a couple of big questions, obviously, is the first one is what story? And there's a large range of different stories that they can go that has a similar structure from Ocarina of Time. I think the simplest one would be a link to the past. Um, I can't imagine a movie being 90 minutes long that they can land this. I mean, I would be shocked if they can do 90 minutes and that people will come out of the movie theater satisfied where the live action animated is a much easier way to kind of do that transition live action. I don't know how Nintendo, even the Mario movie got, it was fast, right? Like even we came out of that. Like, I wish there was a little bit more that they slowed down a little. I think it'd be even harder to do that with a live action film of link. The second thing is, you know, we had a big shock to the system when Chris Pratt was Mario. We have never heard link speak. Like we've heard Mario make, you know, it's a me Mario and, you know, different noises. Link has not spoken and they're going to choose an actor who's going to become the first ever voice of Link in our history. And so like, you know, besides the old, old, old cartoons um, from way back, but no one really remembers that. Everyone doesn't know what Link sounds like. And they're going to choose the new voice of Link in this because they're not going to do a silent protagonist. I can't imagine they do a silent protagonist live action. So who is going to be that person? That's going to be the next big question that I am very curious about. What do you guys want? Um, to Sony, see? Sony putting money down to be a distributor. Yeah, they, 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 they will they, sneak they, in a little uh, Tom Holland in there. Yeah, Tom oh, Holland. I, I, have a, I got an idea. I got an idea. How about Orlando Bloom? Um, still dresses legless from freaking Lord Rain. <laughs> you know just what? It's not stage. crazy, but he's older now. I don't know if that's going to fly. Just give him a sword as legless. I, I think I think I have an idea. You get either Pablo Shriver or going to step in via an, emotion, an emotional link, a very over the top emotional link, and just you know, uh, Pablo just, Pascal. He's everywhere. Pablo Pascal. Put yeah, yeah, put him in there. Uh, but uh, what do you guys think should be in this live? adaptation of legend of zelda let us know what you think in the comments below but if you like this type of content make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel until next time this is marsman signing off peace out guys